This week on the Agents to Owners podcast, it is my pleasure to have the godfather of independent agency collaboration, the captain himself, Dave Jackson. Uh, Dave does so much for our industry. It's a pleasure to have him here. Dave Jackson, welcome to the show. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, I'm ex excited to get into everything that you have going. There's so many things you have going with your own agency, another scratch agency, um, and, and all the things you're doing with IAOA. So there's so much for us to talk about. But before we get into all that, why don't you just give us a quick 30,000 foot view of your background in insurance? Well, it's the only thing I've ever known right out of college. I stumbled in insurance like most everybody, you know, does. And 44 years later, here I am I'm still enjoying, enjoying life. I don't think I'll ever retire. I, I just love it. So I spent a lot of my years out of those 40 plus years on the captive side. I worked for yeah. a carrier and I had two all state agencies, a state farm agent. I finally got smart, went independent uh, almost 10 years ago and uh, had an independent agency in Arizona. I've since sold that and moved to beautiful Nashville, Tennessee about a year ago, started a new niche commercial agency. And for nine years now, um, since I founded IAOA, I've been uh, managing that group and uh, still do a few things on the travel side, travel agency side of things and enjoying life. Yeah. Uh, wh so what led to the selling of Jackson Insurance and starting this new niche risk cannabis? Um, a couple of things. Good friend of mine who bought my agency was... Uh, a neighbor and lived in the same town. We had talked about it for a few years. And so, you know, I was getting close to age 65. I turned 65 in, in, my, in May this year. So uh, I had a retail office location. It kind of mm -hmm. started out as a state farm agent. They want you in, you know, retail offices. And uh, that didn't work out after a year. So I still had a lease. I could have walked away, but um, I still, um, wanted to go independent. And so I decided to stay in that location. And, uh, so now I'm into my third three year lease term on this office space. And that was coming due. So that was, uh, a year ago when I retired. Yeah. So do I go another three years? That'll take me, you know, age so-and-so. And I decided, you know, now is a good time. The lease kind of had a little bit to do with it. So I sold it when I was 64. Okay. So didn't go. I didn't want to go beyond age sixty-five. Just, just one of my things. So that was what prompted it. At that point, it could have been any time within a three or four-year span, but that kind of uh, led us to do it when we did it. And so yeah, it worked out great. Okay. And then then we decided to move closer to grandkids and ended up in Tennessee. Okay. So uh, why why risk cannabis? And and tell us a little bit about that. So during my um, Jackson Insurance Group years, I did have a niche um, in commercial space, and that was uh, drone insurance. Yeah, I remember that. I really liked that, yeah. And I was hoping to get into aviation even deeper, like get my own pilot's license and and, and insure more aviation risks. Um, that got delayed, and so that didn't happen. So uh, when – actually before uh, I sold my agency – I knew a guy in California. He, in fact, he's a IOA member and owned, owned an agency, did a lot in uh, different niche spaces. And cannabis was one of them that he'd been in for a couple of years. So he was really pushing me. He, he, I talked and he said, you, you should get into this. So we talked about it and I decided, you know, it's an emerging market. I like that's like aviation or drone was drone, you know, drones were a new thing. So I like emerging markets and, um, it looked a little bit like the lottery, you know, uh, not legal in every state yet, but it will, it will grow and, uh, cannabis will. So there's room for expansion and growth. And, uh, you know, I work anywhere and through him, we were licensed in all 50 States. So, um, decided to get into it because it's a new industry relatively. So, uh, so jumped in, learned everything I could, and we ensure every aspect from, 
uh, growers to manufacturers to wholesalers to retailers, anybody who touches cannabis, um, we can insure uh, for all lines of coverage. So I'd imagine, um, you know, in the states that it is legal and it's not legal here in this state, but it probably will be very soon. Right. So uh, you probably have a market for, and like you said, the retail and the wholesalers. Um, mm -hmm. How is that going so far? And what, what are the challenges that you've experienced so far? It's going really well. Um, there aren't too many challenges other than a uh, lack of knowledge, you know? So uh, the owners who uh, need insurance are our clients or prospects. They don't know the space that well. They don't know it from a business aspect to know yep. what coverages do I need or should I need? It's not like a restaurant. So I've been around a hundred years, you know, so they're learning their own business and industry. So it's just lack of knowledge um, just because it's relatively new, you know, 10, 15, 20 years um, overall. I'd imagine these shops, this is where I was going, where, where that, that it is becoming legalized. You're going to see shops popping up all over the place, similar mm -hmm. to what the e-cig uh, market mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. I would imagine. And I imagine there's probably going to be a lot of e-cig shop, shops that are just turning into um, distributors, to cannabis distributors. Quite, quite possible, yeah. Yeah, so is that kind of what you're hitting and what you're what you're seeing so far is a lot of those? Yep. Yeah. Yep, and and there's not a ton of carriers, you know, that right. want to be in this market yet. So. So there's uh, limited access. There's um, that doesn't give my prospect, you know, tons of options. It's not like a restaurant where you can go, you know, hundreds of companies. They'll insure a restaurant. So, um, so there's a lot of um, uh, uniqueness to it that I really enjoy. Which is yeah, which is probably fun. It's totally. something completely different from what you've done the last, yep. you know, forty years. Yep. And, and I always have to throw a disclaimer in there. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah. I It's not because I'm a serious user of the product. I could go be a field tester all day long, but that's not why. Uh, it's just the market. And, yeah. uh, and I think it's cool. It's interesting. Kind of like drones. Um, I never owned a drone myself, believe it or not. I wanted to, but I never did. And uh, I never got that far. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, we're having a blast and... And it's been fun so far. Okay, great. Let's uh, let's pivot over to uh, some IAOA. And one of the most recent um, developments that has come up with IAOA is the market access, mm -hmm. which from what I could tell is somewhat blowing up. Tell us, tell us about market access. So last year, 2022, we had a really busy year. Um, before I get into that, I just want to drop a couple things. Yeah. Um, one thing I did that I've really been wanting for a to do for a long time was create a foundation. So a legal nonprofit entity. So we did that. IOA Foundation was created in 2022. That's going to give anybody, literally anyone on the planet, not just our members, an opportunity to make donations for the educational uh, purpose of um, uh, funding scholarships for IOA members who are first timers at our annual nice. conference innovation. Yeah. So we've done that in the past, but you would contribute uh, during the registration process. So you bought your ticket to come to our conference. That's been in place for a few years, but I, um, that only happens for, you know, three months before a conference. So I want to give all of us an opportunity who want to, to donate to, you know, a solid fund and do it in a, uh, a non-taxable away so you can write it off as a you know a donation taxable donation and uh benefit uh, others yeah mostly mostly newer agents who you know are looking to further their careers in our industry so it's a way to give back to the newer generations and help them uh earn a scholarship to attend our conference so that happened in 2022 uh we also relaunched Another program, uh, which is called Agency Listings. Yep. This is exclusive for IOA members, and we're almost at 9,000 members now, um, in case people don't know. Uh, IOA is a group where social media-based Facebook groups, and we have just under 9,000 members who are 100% independent, not captive or other types or career agents, independent uh, agency owners. 
principals, partners, or owners. Um, and we're nine years old. So uh, the agency listings allows members to either list their agency for sale, just like a real estate MLS yeah. service, or potentially buy an agency if there is one for sale. So it's available right on our website, subscription-based. You can list your agency and and then buyers will be notified, or if you're a potential buyer, you can subscribe for free. And if an agency you might be interested in uh, becomes available or uh, listed for sale, then you would be notified as a potential buyer. So we just put the buyer and the seller together. Each side pays a subscription fee to see the listings or, or list themselves. Yeah. And uh, we put the buyer and seller together and at that point we're out of it. We walk away and, and they do their thing. So, that we tried to launch a couple of years ago. We had a few technical um, difficulties that we couldn't get resolved right away. So we kind of shelved it for a little bit, but now it's back fully functional. It's right on our website, IAOA.com. And you can, um, if you're a buyer, uh, again, it's exclusively for IOA members, but if you're a buyer, you can subscribe for free and then upgrade to a paid subscription when you're notified of a potential agency for sale. Uh, okay. and if you're a seller, you can list your agency for sale. It's only 297 bucks a year. So it's not like there's a lot of cost to it. Yeah. Um, we just want to provide it as a service because, uh, it's calmed down a little bit, but mergers and acquisitions was going hot and heavy for quite a while. So, but it's still important. Baby boomers are still there of the biggest seg segment in our population who are in the insurance, uh, agency space. So they're looking to perpetuate to sell to another outsider. And a lot of times they don't know how to find a buyer. Right. So that's a important service that we're providing for members. So, but your question was about market access. So uh, it kind of goes back to the last several years where I'll take a poll in our group. I do it every year, sometimes twice a year. What, if we could do something as a group overall, what would you want to have provided? Every time I take a poll, every time, number one is group medical benefits. Well, of course, we all want that because that doesn't exist, right? Uh, it doesn't uh, unless you have, you know, an employer-employee relationship, you have your own group plan. Yeah. But if you're a one-off or an individual or part-timers or 1099ers and you just have a serious hard time gaining access, and I, that's why it's always number one uh, on the request list. So in our polls and surveys. So uh, unfortunately, the, the legislature still won't allow our group as an infinity group to qualify as a group for group health, uh, group medical insurance. So that's still on the drawing board. If it ever mm -hmm. does happen, we are allowed to qualify. Then we'll go seek out options for that. But in the meantime, number two and number three, uh, two programs or one program I'm still working on, that's a group E&O program that's mm -hmm. in the works right now. Uh, I hope to have something available second quarter to uh, show our members and say, here's what we've researched the market for. Um, they've got they've got access out in you know in the market through brokers or associations or different programs, but uh, there's too many people that don't have good policies, just like all lines of insurance. They either don't have good policy, a policy with good language, which is going to protect them properly, or they're getting it at such a, a high, there's options that are just overpriced. Yeah. So they're not always uh, doing themselves a service by going out and seeking it on their own. So we're going to provide them with solid options and having done the research that will let them know that this is one of the best policy forms available on the market. And it's a very fair competitive cost. So that's a program we're doing uh, right now as well. And I'm promised I'm going to get the market access. So market access <laughs> was <laughs> one great. Of number two or number three on this survey I run every year. Uh, you know, and, and in, you're in the group, you know, by far number one request is, where do I insure this risk? What insurance carrier yeah. is going to do is going to help me with this? And it's usually, uh, yes, it's they're one offs usually because, yeah. uh, you know, everybody knows where to go with their sweet spot. You know, the things that they insure every day, daily, they know where to go for those. But if it's a one off, like some bizarre commercial risk that they don't have any idea, uh, you know, where to insure it, where do I go? 
That's what we call a market search inquiry. Uh, those happen every day, by far number one thing that's requested for in our group. And so that's been a big hot topic. You know, I need market access. So I start, this is three years in the, in the, the running for research, three years now. So I start talking to folks, talked to a couple of them. They're like, I can help you start from scratch a network. We call it a network, which yeah. allows market access. And so I know all the carriers, I can get the appointments, we can go through. Well, that was an option. Uh, I talked to three guys that could help do that. That means uh, all our members in every 50 states. So we want to be national. I didn't want to be just a handful of states and, you know, not have it available for everyone. That would, that wasn't our goal at all. So it had to be national. And so you got to get all the carrier appointments, do all the licensing, you know, I'd have had to bring on some staff and, and yeah. run through all of that. And that would have taken some time. Right. Uh, and it takes time to get up and running. So we researched that. It was an option. It wasn't probably our best option. So I kept looking. Obviously, uh, another option is to look at what's existing. And can we go partner with somebody and white label their program? That became a pretty viable option once I started digging into that. I interviewed several of them. I interviewed several of them several years ago when I became independent. Um, but, you know, they change and times change. So I got up to date information, researched and talked to a lot of them. Some of them are members of our group, our IOA group, uh, because they own agencies and they also have started networks of their own. And so got all the pros and cons. Um, a lot of the pros, a lot of the cons were extreme costs either to enter or to exit or to maintain, right? So a lot of them have an entry fee. Some of them have an exit fee. Some uh, do kind of um, limit you as far as what happens when you do exit and decide, you know, my time is up. Uh, can I get released from the carriers and keep my policies? Do I have 100% ownership? All these clauses that are built in these, these contracts. So once I got to start looking, it went boiled down to just a couple of um, actual viable options. And so we white label the program. The, the company is called the AC companies. Yep. Uh, they're based out of Ohio. They were started because nationwide agents, nationwide insurance company decided to spin off yeah. their agents three years ago, three and a half years ago from captive agents to now independent agents. So they could represent more than just nationwide. They could be independent and bring on other carriers who are in the independent space and bring on contracts with them and sell their products. So there was a group of them, those nationwide agents that said, you know, we're going to need these. We can go out to all any of the top 10 or however many different, there's probably hundreds of them if you look hard enough, networks out there. Oh, we can create our own. And they decided to create their own. Yeah. So they have about 900 members today. They're only three and a half years old. Uh, they rank number seven already in three and a half years. So when I started looking at it, wow, uh, impressive growth in just a short period of time. Why? What's going on? Well, they have the benefit of bringing on nationwide agents, right? Yep. Uh, so out of those 900, about 500 are ex nationwide agents, but the other 400 are true independents. Not too many that have flipped from captive to independent yet, but they will. And so impressive growth. I talked to the leadership team several times, met in person, and decided that that was the best way to go. They showed me their agreement that agents would sign to when they join up with them. So on the, uh, I looked at that, and there were some things in there that I knew just from reading insurance contracts and other types of contracts for for business, I knew that there were some things that weren't favorable. I didn't like them. So I took them to my legal team and they decided to uh, edit it somewhat, not, not drastically, but some things. And most of those things were in there because Nationwide wanted them when yeah. they first started and they didn't apply anymore. So uh, we edited that agreement. We made it a little more favorable for the agent signing it. And so uh, other than that, the program is 100% the AC companies. Yeah. So on the front side, you see it as IOA market access. That's how we promote it. And on the back side, it's 100% the AC company. I don't get involved 
in answering questions about what carriers and what states and and what's their market appetite and what's uh you know i i can promote general features the most important things that people look for 100 percent ownership uh 100 percent commissions paid directly to you from the carrier no split on commissions um those are two of the big things no exit entry fees no exit fees whatsoever no long-term contract if you want out just a 60-day written notice from either party so all, all those things all those things are very favorable to us no a question. small entry fee uh and the, then 200 bucks a month to 200 bucks a month not you know very very fair so there are lots and lots of features way more um pros and cons uh there were very few cons to be honest so i you know why would you leave them for somebody else or something else i don't know that there's anything you know and there are 48 states so that was a key thing too because a lot of the players that i talked to were in you know a much smaller number of states uh some are in you know 13 states or 22 states and i said i just need somebody who's national because our agents are in every state so our members is there any benefit from going through the IAOA program opposed to just going directly to the AC? You referenced some of the alterations in the contract. That's the only but, thing. Okay. Yep. Everything else, hundred percent them, everything that you would get with the AC, you will get, I, you know, otherwise I'd be creating my own and right. they wouldn't want me to just come in walk in and say, Hey, can I take half your program and then insert my yeah. half that I want? No, they, they wouldn't want that. So, uh, and neither would I. So, um, you know, yeah, you have to accept what they have. So that's a, but that's a good question. Um, there's no difference in the, the cost. There's no like a group discount, you know, kind right. of thing. You do get a first uh, two or three months free at no cost. Okay. So a little bit on the front end, but other than that, um, you know, in the, in the long-term picture, it's all the AC companies. Their leadership team is strong. They have an office in Northeast Ohio. We're going to visit them in a couple of weeks. And uh, they have 15 employees now and they're growing. They'll, they'll be uh, probably ranked number seven right now. They'll probably be in the top three or four by the end of the year. Yeah. So so the most recent Facebook post that I saw you make about it, there's already been 26 IAOA members mm -hmm. that have joined. Yeah, we just launched been... it the day before Christmas. Yeah, so in a month, not even a month and a half, right. that's pretty quick. And there's been hundreds yeah. of inquiries. So what does the onboarding process mm -hmm. look like? They go through sort of an application process through yeah. IOA, and then it's basically turned over to the AC? No, the only thing you do through IOA is submit an inquiry. That's okay. it. So at our website, IOA.com, you can submit um, to obtain information. In order to get three things, a copy of the contract, a uh, list of the carriers for all the states in the various states they do business in and a copy of the commission schedules from all the carriers. In order to get those three things, you must sign a non-disclosure agreement. So, cause those are proprietary. So you submit your um, inquiry through our website. You'll get contacted by either Colin or Adam with the AC companies. And if you want to learn more, they'll send you an NDA to sign electronically. You do. And then you're given those, uh, documents and then you can research all you want or ask any questions you want. And it didn't take long. Uh, we've had almost 500 inquiries in the first 45 days. So when people were answering my survey, yeah, we need market access. They weren't kidding. They were telling us the truth that they really do uh, yeah. want and need market access, especially now in this hard market. Uh, Cause there's carriers that are not only not giving appointments, there are carriers who are pulling appointments from yeah. uh, from their current agency force because they're just not up to production, um, you know, requirements that they like to see. So it's a tough time uh, if you try to go it alone. But here, here's another thing, Brad, that um, I want to tell some of the agents who are listening out there. Uh, there's a certain faction of independent agency owners who would never, for whatever reason, never join a network. They don't think that they just want to they don't want to give up their potential or, or be controlled by some other group of agents. Yeah. They don't want that. They want true autonomy. I want to be able to determine my own success. 
So they get their appointments direct from carriers and they live and die by two things, their commissions that they think they can get better by doing it on their own, which is not always true. No. Can be, but not always because you need a lot of volume to get, you know, the high t- highest tier commission yeah. uh, levels. The second thing is contingency bonuses. Now contingency means it's contingent on you selling a certain amount of business at a certain profitability level, right? Loss ratios. So if you do that, you may or may, you may qualify for a bonus. If you don't, there's no bonus. So here's one of the beauty, beautiful things about um, IOA market access. If you're an independent and you have nothing but direct contracts and you have, let's say one preferred carrier with a good chunk of your uh, business with that carrier, you can, with our program, bring that carrier over solely for the purpose of contingency bonus, not commissions. Leave your commissions where they are. We may have a better commission schedule and you can bring them over just for care and you can pick and choose carriers and you bring that carry over and uh, we can show you our track record with that carrier uh, in terms of profitability and how we've done in terms of, uh, in uh, it's only been three years, but how we've done in terms of contingency bonus. And you're going to increase your likelihood of getting a bonus because that overall book of business collective from all the the, uh, agents who have business with that one single carrier is favorable. Uh, Maybe you're, I'm going to use numbers that only apply, would only matter to insurance agencies, right? Uh, Your loss ratio. A lot of times it'll be a hit uh, mark around 55%. You have to qualify at 55% if you go above it, no bonus. Below it, you get a bonus based on also certain production levels. If you do that, uh, great, you get your bonus. But if you're uh, over, it can be, I, I hit one year at 55.2%. Right. Yeah. Missed too. a bonus. You, you don't get a bonus. Yeah. That can, be, that can mean tens of thousands, sometimes yes. hundreds of thousands of dollars if you have a big enough book of business with that one carrier. It can be that much depending on the size of your agency. That's a significant amount of money to leave on the table. Just unbelievable. So if in, in our case, you could take that one carrier, bring your premium over. We don't care about the policyholders' names or anything about policies. We only care about the amount of premium. Maybe it's 5 or $10 million. Nice size book of business with one carrier. And you bring it over, and now you're pooled with a group of other agencies, and now you got $100 million with that carrier because of, Ever, all the other agencies with them in that same network. Yeah, you now. You, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. You continue. Yeah. So now you've got a, a much bigger book of business to gain leverage on. So I had a guy two weeks ago. You know, you you've heard the we've all heard these stories. You've been in the business long enough. Uh, Christmas Eve fire at a house of his clients. That loss sent him over the roof. It was like uh, 200000 bucks. He's a good size agency. But that one single loss, yeah. a fire in a home, sent his loss ratio over the edge, and he no longer qualified for his contingency bonus. That's a big ouch. Even though you get a chance in October to sign off uh, early to say, I'll take the lower yep. bonus now and take my chances you know, for the last quarter. So, uh, you know how that works. I and, do that every uh, time. Yeah. Most of us sign off because we're afraid. We don't want that big fourth okay. quarter. One day. Yeah, it takes us one day. One claim. Yeah. It will knock you out of it. It's a tough, tough decision. And by doing that, you might leave a bunch of money on the table, but you don't necessarily, you might, but you don't necessarily have to do that if you've got a bigger, larger, much larger book of premium uh, that's pooled between you and other agents within a network. I'm talking about five or 10 million, let's say that's a pretty good size versus maybe 500 million. So it could be 10 times as big or a hundred times as big. So it's that much bigger. So you can withstand those losses and they're not going to send you over the threshold yeah. when it comes to contingency bonus loss ratio uh, marks. So that's why it's important. So don't, I, when I talk to uh, direct appointment agencies, I tell them, Keep an open mind. Yeah, you could be making more money, and what's it going to cost you? Two hundred dollars a month, twenty four hundred a year to what? 
put 50 grand, 100 grand in your pocket, uh, potentially, it's definitely worth looking into. Don't don't go into it with a closed mind. Yeah, so I am, and you answered my my next question, which was, I'm a I'm a direct appointment agency, yep. and why would it make sense for me to join a network like that? Well, mm -hmm. um, you referenced the hard market. We've lost a couple markets, and and I'd like to you know get another one or two quality markets. Not going to happen yeah. right now. Uh, Not so on your own. One. No. That's one access to markets and the contingency option. I know from speaking to other agencies, the likelihood of, you know, possibly doubling my contingency bonus. And oh, by the way, there hasn't been much for contingency bonus in the last couple of years. Right, right. Yeah. So it's something that I actually really myself, I thought I would never, ever take a look at it. But the mm -hmm. terms of this contract are so favorable, I'd be foolish not to consider it. That's the way that I look at it. There's there's all very, very little commitment. You know, uh, if you want out, 60 day written notice. There's yeah. no and, and beyond that, you're you're not um, limited to what happens to your policy with carriers. You don't have to wait two years before they get released to you. I've seen that and kind of thing in contracts. Um, you don't have those clauses or things that, and if it would have been, I wouldn't have chosen those for IOA members. That's just not what I would have done. Yeah. There's too many uh, contracts out there with networks that listen, we're, we're not, we're not going to um, be a fit for everyone. We never will be. There's room for however many networks are. Okay. So we didn't create a new one. We're just uh, referring a current yeah. one, you know, so it's not like we've created a whole new network. We're just um, having uh, allowing access for IOA members to have a program that I felt like personally, I did the research for three years and this was the choice we made. And I even um, uh, ran it past our board of advisors in IOA. We have 12 members who serve on a board of advisors who um, look at the things that I'm reviewing. I'll give them a summary. And they'll say thumbs up or, you know what, keep looking or yeah. whatever. So uh, it's not like it was all on my shoulders. I did the, the heavy lifting, but they gave me confirmation once we had it narrowed down to the options that we wanted to consider. Yeah. So with all that's going on with IAOA, uh, which we just touched on most of them, um, you know, the listing program, market access, working on the ENO. Um, the uh, ch uh, foundation, which that I love, by the way. And I think that's mm -hmm. that's going to be a huge opportunity for scratch agents. And I've talked to a couple that, one, uh, who have become friends with, Stephen Turnbull, who he wouldn't mm -hmm. have been able to go to that, uh, you know, to last year's conference had there not been some sort of, you know, support yeah. like that. He's only been an agent a few months. Yeah, seven months at that. So, so how many right. people are out there and really all of our, young independent agents they need to go to this conference mm -hmm. it, it's going to change them so that that's that's fantastic and My question, obviously obviously i'm biased when you say that but you're saying that from as with your own opinion correct yeah yeah I, you've, I've, been, you've been to a number of them i've said a number of times the i being exposed to the iaoa group and the conference changed the pathway of my agency and, you know, and I've been an agent since 1999. So 24 years. Yeah. And and what it did was help me evolve as a business owner. Instead In what of, ways? Well, uh, you know, I Sorry, was... Sorry, I don't mean to be no, the interviewer No, that's here. okay. I, I was, <laughs> but I'm I was, very curious. Yeah, I was operating as... I was operating as an insurance agent that owned an agency. And what, what it did to by expose me to innovative... Uh, innovative people, forward thinking people, mm -hmm. it opened up my mind to running my business as a business owner and to different automation, which I didn't know existed. Right. And from different ways of operating, of working smarter, not harder. And so it, it, it changed my, it changed my career path and it's, it's made me a better business owner. It's made me a better insurance agent. And right, we're not doing a, a podcast for IOA, but th this is my true feelings. And when I speak to other people, when I speak to other agents, they, 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 you know, use those same sentiments time and time again. 
And, and um, people are, bl- especially first timers, and you know this, you hear this, it is a little okay. bit like drinking from a water hose. There's so much and how do you, you know, how do you retain all of it? Well, that's just the beginning of it. Right. You, know, you don't have to, you don't have to add there. But so I, I, I think that a foundation and, and more of a, a strategic organized foundation, uh, not that it wasn't that way before, to, you know, to get more of our scratch agents and newer agencies there, I think it's fantastic. And, and I just think there's going to be a lot, I hope. There's a lot of agents, you know, like myself that are willing to sponsor that and, mm-hmm. and, and willing to jump in and say, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll sponsor somebody's, um, you know, somebody's initiation or, you know, for right. you to get in or whatever. Yeah, I, I think it's fantastic. Registration. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. So my, my question was going to be with all these things going on with IOA, who's managing all of this? It can't just be you. I mean, that's a full, that's a full-time job. Do you have, yeah. are, is there a full-time staff person or a part-time staff person or what, how it's does that just work? Me and my partner, my, yeah. um, just fiance, two. And, uh, my yeah. fiance and partner in crime. She's sitting right across from me here. I know. She's uh, listening to every word. I'm yeah, watching what is. I say. Yeah. Be careful. <laughs> so it's just the two of us. Um, wow, you know, that's incredible. for conference, we do ask for a lot of help from volunteers yeah. and, uh, and we also have a program that we, uh, rely on for, we call them MVPs, member vendor pro, um, partners. Okay. And we have over 150 of those. We've, we've had tremendous support from the industry, whether it be carriers or, uh, third party vendors, you know, or other educational aspects of the industry. We've had tremendous support. Um, Number one, because they like our group because we're agency owners only. We um, not say that it's, it's a bad thing if you're not an owner. Yeah. I mean that at all. It's just that as owners, you have uh, very unique interests in your agency that no one else has. You know, obviously your staff doesn't have the same level of interest. Uh, carriers don't, although you work with them every day, um, you know, or third party vendors, whether it be technology or whatever it might be. So, but you have, as an owner, you have a, a you very unique, uh, vantage point from running this business. So when you join a peer group like IOA, your questions are going to be very specific. That's exactly why I started the group. I wanted to get my own questions answered selfishly just so i could better my agency and who did i want to get those answers from my peers same people who are doing it on the street every day running their business many of them very successfully and so can i ask you questions i was an industry veteran yeah but on the independent side i was a rookie yeah so i had different types of questions than i ever did before i know the answer to this but i'm going to ask it anyway in your wildest dreams, do you think it would, have, it would have evolved to this? It was completely by accident. The right. story goes, I was invited to join a Facebook group right after I went independent. Uh, and it was, turned out, it was, I don't know, a thousand members, like 900 of them were all state agents. And they were just pass around leads. You know, my clients moving to another state, yeah. can a new agent help? Uh, and so that didn't benefit me. I don't know why I thought it was something different. Anyway. That's when it hit me. There should be something similar to this, but for independent agents like me. Yeah. And I mean, the very next day, you could start a Facebook group in about six seconds. Right. The very next day, and I invited like five guys. I only knew, I came from the state farm world. I only knew five, like five independents, and they were all in Arizona. And so I didn't have a way to grow it, but I knew they knew others. And so I encouraged them, you know, let's get this going. And fast forward today, we're almost at 9,000. 9, yeah. So what's next for IAOA? Oh my. So I've got a, uh, I mean, you got, you got enough going right now. You don't, we don't yeah, need anything. We else, always but... do. Um, the yeah. conference just keeps growing and growing. Yeah. Uh, last year we had over 500 Cindy's. We had 121 exhibitor booths, uh, sold out every year, sold out in the exhibit hall. So, uh, we're looking at ways to improve it, make it better. One of the beautiful things about it is that everybody who steps on stage to present is a fellow IOA member and they do it out of the goodness of their heart because they want to help their peers. 
um, just like you and I do. So I appreciate, I applaud you with what you're doing with your podcast here. Uh, yeah. Giving back to the industry and helping others um, is, you know, why we exist. So um, there's a couple things I cannot tell you about because it would Ooh. jeopardize their, yeah, jeopardize their um, potential existence. But I can tell you that it's uh, it's going to be another wild ride in 2023. Uh, I don't have any aspirations of being the next big association in our industry, you know, overtake uh, Big I or PIA or someone like that. No, I, we have no, no aspirations for that. I love that they do all the things they do for their members and the, especially legislative affairs. We need representation in, in Washington for our industry. And that's extremely important. Whether you're a new agent and don't realize that, uh, you need to know that. That's very, very important. But we don't have any aspects. I don't. I don't have any aspects of taking over, adding a uh, you know, a legal legislative division or doing something on that side. Yeah. I don't have anything uh, on that. I don't think our members, the association, do a good enough job there, and they've been doing it for so long. Um, I don't care to enter that arena and interrupt space that way. But we've got some cool things uh, in the works. But mostly because we just listen to our members. What do you want? How can we help? And we see if we can find a solution for them. That's what it usually boils down to. Yeah. Well, Dave, I want to thank you for your time today. I, I truly sure. appreciate it. But I also want to say thank you for what you're doing with IAOA. Uh, you've helped myself and thousands of people. And I know you're a, you're a humble guy and you know may not take credit for it. But uh, on behalf of, of everybody out there, I sincerely appreciate what you've done. And to Terry, too, um, I know she's a bit sassy, but um, you guys do so much work, and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. So uh, thank you for all that you guys do uh, for the entire independent agency force. Well, I'll, I'll accept your um, thanks. I appreciate that. But it's really, it, you know, as humble as I can be, it really goes to you and the 8,734 members that are in our group that bought into this vision and they're the ones I I'm not the one that shares knowledge every day. Yeah. It's all those almost 9,000 members who are doing it, uh, sharing their knowledge day in, day out. They're the ones that bought into the vision. So my uh, thanks go out to each and every yeah. one of them because they're what makes the group as uh, successful as it is. Yeah. Here, here. And uh, with that, I think that's a good place to put a bow on it. So thank you again for being here. Everyone Appreciate else, thank it. you for listening to another edition of the Agents to Owners podcast. And we're going to see you next week. Thanks, Brad.